After studying this module, you shall be able to know about basic introduction of flame photometry, development of flame photometry, principle and working of flame photometry and its applications and limitations. Flame photometry is an analytical technique in which radiation emitted by neutral atoms is calculated. Neutral atoms are produced by introducing the sample into the flame, therefore the name is flame photometry. It is also called as flame emission spectroscopy as in process the emission is radiated. The most important application of flame photometry is the analysis of alkali and alkaline earth metals for instance sodium, calcium, magnesium, potassium and lithium. It is found to be reliable and a convenient technique process for analysis especially low temperature flame photometry because group 1 and group 2 elements are sensitive to flame photometry as they have low excitation energies. Now we shall see a brief development of flame photometry. Flame photometry is a type of atomic spectroscopy. It is one of the oldest technique for analysis of elements. In 1823 an alcohol lamp was used as a flame excitation source by Herschel who published images of flame emission spectra. In 1870, quantitative estimation of sodium was stated by Janssen. As an excitation source, he used a Bunsen burner and the sample was introduced on a platinum wire into the flame. In 1873, Pellet, Grenier and Champion measured sodium emission with the help of a spectroscope with aid of visual photometry. They used two flames each for known and unknown sample. In 1928, Ludengard used an air acetylene burner for developing an entire system of flame excitation. It produced a higher flame temperature while holding the flame excitation stability. In year 1945, Barnes et al. made first flame photometer in United States of America. This flame photometer consisted of modern flame cell maker air natural gas burner. In year 1948, Beckman Corporation designed a new burner with a new combination of burner and aspirator. They introduced DU spectrometer attached with flame aspirator. In 1955, Walsh laid down the foundation of atomic absorption analysis. Now we shall have a look at the principle of flame photometry. The low flame photometry is basically similar to simple quantitative flame test. The main principle of flame photometry is at the temperature of the flame, the alkali and alkaline earth metals get thermally dissociated into atoms. During this process, the atoms get excited and move from ground state to the excited state. When these excited atoms return to the ground state, radiation of specific wavelength is emitted from these excited atoms. The process of flame photometry has been depicted in figure. The specific wavelength is characteristic of individual element. The intensity of the emitted wavelength is proportional to the concentration of the element present. And the number of atoms moving back to the ground state from excited state is proportional to the number of excited atoms, that is the concentration of the sample. The specific wavelength is isolated by an optical fiber and then photo detector converts it into an electrical signal. Now we shall have a look at the instrumentation part. Flame photometry consists of the following parts. Number 1, burner. Number 2, nebulizer and mixing chamber. Number 3, monochromator. Number 4 is the detector. And number 5 is the recorder and the display unit. Figure display the components of a flame photometer. Let us discuss them one by one. Number one is the burner. Burner consists of flame which converts a sample into the excited atoms by spraying the sample into the combination of fuel and oxidant. There are various types of burners used in flame photometry such as mech burner, laminar flow burner and total consumption burner. Fuel and oxidant are essential for production of flame. The temperature plays an important role in converting the sample into neutral atoms which then get excited by heat because at high temperature ions will be formed instead of neutral atoms and at low temperature the atoms will not get excited. 
most commonly used combination of fuel plus oxygen are as follows. We have the oxygen acetylene mixture and the temperature it gives is 3100 to 3200 degrees Celsius. Nitrous oxide acetylene flame gives temperature ranging from 2900 to 3000 degrees Celsius. Natural gas oxygen mixture gives temperature from 2700 to 2800 degrees Celsius and so on. Number two is the nebulizer and the mixing chamber. The function of nebulizer is to transport the homogeneous solution into the flame at a steady rate. In the mixing chamber, fuel and oxidants are mixed together and then transported to the flame. Number three is the monochromator. Monochromator is used to select the light of specific wavelength from the flame. Simple filters are used in flame photometer as its analysis is done for simple alkali metals like sodium, calcium, magnesium, potassium and lithium. Having a filter for each element is used. For analyzing an element, its specific filter is used. It will filter all other non-specific wavelength. For example, for barium, the emission wavelength is 515 nanometer and the flame color is lime green. For calcium, the wavelength is 622 nanometer and the flame color is orange. For lithium, the wavelength is 670 nanometer and the flame color is red carmine. For potassium, the wavelength is 766 nanometer and the flame color is violet. And for sodium, the wavelength is 583 nanometers and the color is yellow. Number four is the detector. In this instrument, flame photometric detectors are used. The radiation emitted by atoms are in visible region that is from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. Flame photometric detectors, FPD, is famous for its hydrogen rich flame because it is much cooler than oxygen rich flame which is used in flame ionization detector, FID. Chemiluminescent reaction is used by flame photometric detector in the hydrogen air flame. Flame photometric detector is sensitive for sulfur and phosphorus comprising molecules. Flame photometric detector works by passing the effluent through the low temperature hydrogen air flame. Then the sulfur and phosphorus are converted into emitting species. The wavelength maximum for the emitting species of sulfur compounds is at about 394 nanometers. The sulfur compounds are excited to S2. The wavelength maximum for the emitting species of phosphorus compounds is about 512 to 526 nanometers. The phosphorus compounds are excited to HPO. For phosphorus compounds, 526 nanometer band pass filter is used for filtering the emitted UV and visible bands. For sulfur compounds, 394 nanometer band pass filter is used for filtering the emitted UV and visible bands. The intensity emitted by sulfur and phosphorus compounds are photometrically recorded. At 200 parts per billion, sulfur compounds can be identified. However, at 20 parts per billion, phosphorus compounds can be identified. Looking at the fifth component, that is the recorder and the display. Recorder records the data obtained from the detector and the display unit reads out this data. Displays are also called as readout devices. Now, we shall have a look at the sample preparation. If the sample is not in the liquid form, then it is converted into aqueous medium, which can be directly introduced into the flame photometer. Changing the solid sample into aqueous media can be achieved by a number of steps. For example, extraction of salts from sample using deionized water. For instance, for extracting sodium from soil, saturated calcium sulfate is used. In case of organic samples, through ashing, the organic materials are removed and then the remaining oxides are dissolved using strong acids. Now we shall see the working of flame photometry. First step is nebulization. In this step, the solution that is to be analyzed, it is aspirated into the burner system which converts the solution into small fine particles. Nebulization process is shown in the following steps. Evaporation of solvent which results in finely divided solid particles. These particles then travel towards the flame producing gaseous atoms. These gaseous atoms absorb the energy and get excited then move from ground state to the excited state. Radiation is emitted when the excited atoms move back to the ground state. 
and the intensity of the radiation emitted is proportional to the concentration. Fuel oxidant ratio is very important in flame. It is responsible for maintaining the flame temperature. Following is the description of events going on in the flame. Desolvation, then vaporization, then atomization, then excitation and then the emission process. In desolvation, the metal particles get dehydrated after coming into contact with the flame resulting in the evaporation of the solvent. In the vaporization process, this step is similar to desolvation. In atomization, with the help of the flame heat, the metal ions get reduced to metal atoms. In the excitation step, the atoms absorb some amount of energy because of the electrostatic attraction amongst the nucleus and electrons of that atom. This absorption of energy results in the movement of atoms from ground state to the excited states. In the emission process, the excited atoms emit a radiation of specific wavelength which is then measured by flame photometric detector. This above mentioned process occurs because at higher energy levels, the atoms are highly unstable so they move back to the ground state level and during this process, atoms emit radiation. Now we shall study the applications of flame photometry. Flame photometry is used for qualitative analysis of elements by comparing emitted wavelength with the standard. Flame photometry is used in quantitative analysis for determining the concentration of group 1 and 2 elements. It is used for examining hard water for determining the concentration of calcium present in it. It is used to examine urine for determining the concentration of sodium and potassium present in it. It is used for examining hard biogas and ceramic materials for determining the concentration of the calciums present in it. Now we shall have a look at the limitations of flame photometry. Only few elements can be analyzed. Many metallic salts, soil and other compounds are insoluble in common solvent. Therefore, these compounds cannot be examined by flame photometry as sample only be, can be introduced as solution into the flame. Amount of sample is very important because small amount of sample are tough to examine as samples are volatile. Sample is lost during volatilization also. In process of solubilization of samples with the solvent, there are chances of mixing of impurities with the sample which lead to error in the observed spectra. Now we shall summarize what we have learnt in this module. Flame photometry is an analytical technique in which radiation emitted by neutral atoms is calculated. Neutral atoms are produced by introducing the sample into the flame, therefore the name flame photometry. The most important application of flame photometry is the analysis of alkali and alkaline earth metals like sodium, calcium, magnesium, potassium and lithium. The main principle of flame photometry is at the temperature of flame, the alkali and alkaline earth metals get thermally dissociated into atoms. The intensity of the emitted wavelength is proportional to the concentration of element present and the number of atoms moving back to the ground state from excited state is proportional to the number of atoms excited, that is the concentration of the sample. The temperature plays an important role in converting the sample into neutral atoms which get excited by heat because at high temperature ions will be formed instead of neutral atoms and at low temperature the atoms will not get excited. Simple filters are used in flame photometer as analysis is done for simple alkali metals like sodium, calcium, magnesium, potassium and lithium. Flame photometric detector FPD is famous for its hydrogen rich flame because it's much cooler than the oxygen rich flame which is used in flame ionization detector. Chemiluminescent reaction is used by flame photometric detector in the hydrogen air flame. Flame photometric detector is sensitive for sulfur and phosphorus comprising molecules. It is used for qualitative analysis of elements by comparing emitted wavelength with the standard. Flame photometry is used in quantitative analysis for determining the concentration of group 1 and 2 elements.